Lately, I've been having a lot of fun with multi-element antennas and experimenting with them from uh, three element verticals with a reflector, a director, and a driven element. Uh, played around a little bit with a reflector behind a driven element. Now what I'm going to do is do a co-phasing. Now I'm going to co-phase two vertical antennas together. How am I going to do that? Well, there's a harness. I'm going to take the easy route out. I'm building this for 10 meters. I'm going to use a co-phase harness that's already been built for the 11 meter band. And we may be off a little bit as far as feed point impedance. I'll make that up with the tuner. Um, building a harness to co-phase. When you co-phase two antennas, what you want to do is make sure that they're receiving the phase, or we'll just say they go from zero to 90 to uh, 180 to 270 to 360 together. They're basically perfectly matched and putting out a signal. Now, when you take those two signals and put them together, uh, about a half a wavelength, I've kind of even experimented now, a little bit maybe somewhere closer to five eighths of a wavelength, it gives you bi-directional gain. I've done some modeling and noticed uh, in my models that uh, I can get a, a little over uh, four-ish, four plus by extending out a little bit at about five eighths of a wavelength apart. So now putting the harness together, if you wanted to do this on your own, it, it takes some effort and some work. The two feed before you meet them together with the, the impedance, I should say, you're basically turning the harness into a, uh, a matching component or what have you, but you got to have the two pieces of coax that are going to the two uh, driven elements identical. If not, if they're changed a little bit or the other, you're going to throw, you're basically how a phased array works. They're going to go from one end to the other and controlling it is not what happens with co-phase antennas. So we're going to co-phase them and send them directly apart. Like I said, I'm going to take the easy way out of this and just buy a pre-built, pre-purchased um, harness unit and do it. If you're really interested in um, how this all works or whatever, I'll try to put some links below that explains uh, what's going on with the, uh, with the phasing and the degrees and what have you there. But really what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to battle feed point impedance a little bit I'm not sure, but we'll see. But let's put this antenna together. I've got all the parts here. I've got um, the harness. I've got, um, they're going to be two identical vertical antennas. And I'm going to set them up and we're going to see if we can make some contacts. Stick around. Okay, here we go from what's becoming one of my favorite spots because of all this turf out here to, to play antenna play with on antennas. This is Portsmouth City Park in Portsmouth, Virginia. All right, so this is my 50 ohm coax going into a choke. Why did I use a choke? Well, I'll be honest with you. I had a barrel connection and I can't find it. And I thought about it. I was like, oh man, I say, hey, you know what? I think a choke would be a great place where we make the transition from 50 to 75 ohms. This, uh, this here, as you see, is going to, this is the harness going to each antenna. And I got it dead center and back here now. This harness is available pretty inexpensive all over truck stops, CV places, what have you. To make your own harness, these two elements here, what I have the 75 ohm elements here, they have to be spot on identical perfect. And for each frequency, each band really need to be calculated in odd multiples of a quarter wavelength from what I understand. So this thing's act acting kind of like a uh, matching unit, uh, the feed point at the at the uh, antenna goes up comes back down to here with that length of 75 ohm uh, coax and then converts into 50 and then 50 will be back to the radio all right here we go i've got both antennas uh if we can see it here both antennas about five eighths of a wavelength apart i know you probably can't see too good there's a lot of glare but let's get up close and i'll show it to you here what i did was uh the exact same setup on both sides this is what we call the red slug feed point these are uh, my little people are asking about them jpc 12 radial plates 
and uh, four, I, both sides of these, both, both elements, I did them at 90 degree intervals. They do come real close. They're not touching here as they cross over, but um, there you go. Here's the other side. And as you can see, these are tuned for the 10 meter band. I literally tuned them individually with my 50 ohm coax first. And then uh, from there, uh, put the put the harness on, try to get it dead center, and then the 50 ohm coax, 50 ohm coax, about 30 feet of it, is running over here to, uh, and I checked it here on my rig expert, and holy cow, good result, I'll take it. It's not perfect, it's good enough. And that's what I wanted was good enough. So, there it is. There are the uh, the two antennas, if you can see them, and it's a bright day. There they are. I am aiming 240 degrees. That is dead center of New Zealand. I always jinx myself when I say where I'm aiming at. One side is New Zealand. The other side is uh, kind of across Spain and across the Mediterranean. Now, modeling this thing, I modeled it for a half, and you can see where it was at there. And then I pulled it apart and modeled it for 5 eighths wavelength away from each other. And the bi-directional gain was better, over a TV better, a lot better there. So that's what the uh, computer model is showing me. Pretty good takeoff angle. I'll take it from there and uh, see what we can do. So let's get on the air with the uh, co-phased telescopic whips tuned for the 10 meter band. Let's go see what we can do. And I'm using my uh, Yaesu FT710. The sun's glare is so incredibly bad right now as the sun's going down. I uh, won't be able to show you the face of it. I'll give you some updates on it, but let's see if we can uh, get on air here with my uh, 100 watts, the FT710 and make some contacts. Nothing heard, CQ, CQ, CQDX, CQDX. This is Kilo 4 Oscar Golf Oscar calling CQDX. Kilo 4 Oscar Golf Oscar calling CQ, CQDX, CQDX. Kilo 4 Oscar Golf Oscar calling CQDX and standing by. Okay, I did exactly what I said I didn't want to do. I jinxed myself. I uh, could hear barely a couple faint ZL calls. Talked to my friend Steve there in New Zealand. He said he could barely hear me. Uh, there was a Mariana Island pileup. And uh, I, I just, I tried a few times, let it go. I'm, I don't have a whole lot of time and I really want to play here and make some contact. So I'm aimed straight at South America. What's funny, I could faintly, barely hear some South America calls in there so we'll see from here if uh, i can make some contacts now i'm almost north south so let's get back on here now and check out south america QDX, QDX, Lima Uniform 1, X-Ray America Whiskey. Kilo 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar. Kilo 4? Kilo 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar. Kilo 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar, 5-9. Uh, QSL, you're 5-9 into Virginia, USA. Roger Walters, thank you for the contact, 73. Thank you, 73. You are set, Lima Uniform 1, X-Ray America Whiskey. Well, you got to love the 10 meter band. <laughs> hey, it was fun. Uh, and then obviously made a uh, pretty good contact all the way down to Argentina. I'll take that. Uh, really a lot of work for that contact, though. Um, kind of funny. I, really thought, I really thought 10 would have been doing better. It seemed like it was when I first got on, and then it just died. But I guess that's the way, uh, that's the way it is with the 10 meter band for sure. I've got some other stuff I want to do, hopefully real soon. Uh, my friend John Gendron, uh, Performance Z Arrays. Yeah, that's Z, he's an American, it's not Z Arrays. But um, I've got from him a, a, a complete you know, phasing unit, and uh, we can do this 
for 20 meters, I come out here in the morning and we'll do a 20 meter um, phased array or, or phased verticals and do it with uh, a will, really well built. He knows his stuff with that a really well built uh, setup. But um, this was fun. Uh, it worked and the SWR was there or whatever. I think on another uh, another day we might have uh, really slayed him and made better contacts. But um, hey, it is what it is. You know, this is what uh, ham radio is all about. You have those days where you come out here and you hit home runs and you have these days where you lay down a bunt. You know what I mean? The American baseball guys will know what I'm talking about. That's it. And uh, that's where we're at. Hope you enjoyed uh, that. And uh, please um, like and subscribe. I got so many people that watch the channel and uh, are not subscribers. So I like to get out and do this. Sometimes I'm just slaying it, throwing out all kinds of, uh, making all kinds of DX comments. And sometimes like today where I make a a decent contact or two and uh and band eyes on me so anyway till next time i'm salty walt k4 ogo thanks for watching guys stay salty